You're listening to the Next Gen Profits podcast, and we are your spiritual parents, Craig and Colette Toch. And guys, oh boy, are we going to accelerate your process today? <laughs> because we bring together two powerful ministries. So, so tell me, what happens when you bring adventures in the spirit? And blend it up with a whole lot of next-gen profits. Well, that's what you get in this podcast. You get a download. You get an encounter with the Lord Jesus and with the Holy Spirit. I mean, I was sitting here thinking, what promises could I give you for this podcast? But the list is endless. But I will give you this little teaser. By the end of this podcast, you will have had an encounter with the Lord Jesus and a little bit extra, I also teach you how to take a vision and turn it into a prophetic word. But come and join us. I have Jared Lasky here. You're going to hear the intro that he already shared for his podcast. I encourage you guys to check it out. We've been a, a guest on his show a couple of times. Fantastic host, powerful man of God. Go and give him some support, prophets. You know, we're tribe here and we embrace and we are givers. So get on over to his podcast, like, subscribe, say great things about him, please. I appreciate it so much. So without much ado, let's get on with the podcast, you guys. Well, guys, thank you so very much for joining in on this very special podcast episode. We've got Adventures in the Spirit and Next Gen Prophets, yeah. Apostle Craig and Colette Toach. We're down here at their uh, ministry recording studio where they're reaching tens of thousands of people through the podcast, through the Zooms, webinars. We've got a tribe of prophets right out here in front of a live studio audience. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So I'm so excited to... Uh, Meet them face to face today. We've kept in touch long distance. That they've been special guests on my my podcast before. But guys, I'm excited because we should have been recording for the last hour <laughs> what the Holy Spirit was doing in power. So um, I I just want to jump on in. Apostle Craig, Apostle Colette, thank you so very much for the honor of coming to hang out with you guys, visit you guys, and do this collaboration podcast. So I'd love to know kind of like a little bit of your background, how you started prophesying. No particular order, whoever wants to go first. How did you come to know Jesus start and start prophesying? And a part of your process, as we, we, we've already discussed that before we started recording, but the process so that other people can know, wait a second, that's me. Or someone else is like, that's my friend's process. Oh, thanks, Jared. I can't believe you here. Yeah, I mean, we've had screens between us and, and what have you, but here you are live, and this is awesome. To get... To the question you've asked, I, I would have to say my process started when I got saved with this wonderful lady next to me. And um, I got saved that night and I was told I was had a prophetic call. It was released over me. But I didn't actually start to really prophesy. The first real prophecy that stood out to me was when we went to visit a church. We were just invited we weren't guest speakers or anything. We were just invited to go, and we just felt led. And uh, I was sitting there minding my own business, and the pastor at the time said, if anybody's got a prophetic word, please feel free to speak. I felt that anointing rising up in me, and I was trying to push it down. I'm like, uh-uh, I don't know these people. I don't know this church, Lord. You know, I'm just barely saved. So who am I to stand in front of this church and, and speak a word over this church? But I tell you what, that anointing grew to the point where it actually almost pulled me up to the front. And I thank the Lord that night because he had his grace on me that he gave me a word of encouragement. Because I was expecting, <laughs> you know, you go, to a, you go to a church and you're expecting something, you know, bad to come out because you read the prophets of the Old Testament and they were always prophesying something bad. But that night, it was a word of encouragement. And you know what? I needed that moment because I didn't prophesy in the safety of home. I didn't prophesy in the in the in the security of the people around me. If I made a mistake, you know, they would understand. I had to do that cold turkey in front of this church who I knew nobody. And it showed me the grace that the Lord puts on a prophet to speak to his people, to share his love. If you're just a willing vessel, he will do the rest. And that for me is the nucleus of what started my prophetic call is that I don't need to be a perfect vessel. I just need to be a willing vessel. And when he says go, I go. And when he says speak, I can speak. Oh, that was so, so good. So I like 
literally just snatched the mic from my husband there. Jared, I, I saw he kind of tried to reach out there. I'm like, uh-uh. No, we, we got to go to the next part here. <laughs> now, my experience is like nothing, nothing like Craig's at all because, well, I grew up in church. I, I didn't just grow up in church. I grew up amongst revivalists. All of my family were in ministry. So the gifts of the Spirit, seeing tongues, demon manifestations, interpretations, this is like Friday night Bible study, Wednesday night Bible study, Monday night. There was a lot of Bible studies. <laughs> so it's like this was my everyday normal thing. So if you had to ask me when was the first time I prophesied, I really couldn't tell you because I didn't not. You see, I didn't even call it a prophetic word. I had a relationship with Jesus, and all I did is Jesus would say to me, even from a young age, I just need you to tell them something. And so I would tell them the something. Jesus says, he's got this, and you'll be fine. Okay, so I told them that. I didn't know I was prophesying. I was just relaying a message. And it only when I really started rising up in ministry and making the choice for myself to fulfill the call of my life did I have a name for what I had always been doing. And that's the thing with prophets, is that for most of us, as we grow up, especially for those of you who grew up in the Lord, the presence and the tangible knowledge of Jesus is with you. And prophecy is just an extension. It's just a language. You're just expressing to them what Jesus is telling you. And you don't realize it, guys, but you're actually already prophesying. But, it's, but you know, we try and put a name on it. We try and make it something profound but what is prophecy is it not just expressing the heart and mind of christ mm -hmm. and that's all i did mm -hmm. until like i said i got older and then i could pin a name to it but there's a lot of you listening that you already have this but you perhaps are different to craig you don't feel confident to stand in front of that church and give that word but don't you realize every person where you put your hand on their shoulder and say you know Jesus just wants to tell you he loves you, it's going to work out, and your marriage will be healed. Well, that's prophecy. It's as simple as that. And the more that you flow in that deliberately, the more you incline your ear to him, the more he's going to have something to say to his people. You know, for me, I, I think that the first time I'd actually prophesied, I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. I was in a Christian private school, and from from my twin brother and I, it was this was like a last resort. Like you guys are, you know, like public school wasn't a good thing for us, but working and whatever. And then we went to a Christian private school, and we had this missions team uh, that was going to go to England, Graham Cook Conference, whatever. Right? Mm -hmm. I was what 16, 17, probably seventeen at the time. Age doesn't matter. Uh, this was like two years ago. So. Um, <laughs> So I'm sitting there. I'm kind of got my arms crossed like this. I'm like, okay, yeah, Jesus. Okay, cool. You know, next thing I know, I felt the something drop. It was like a, a download, if you will. You know, just boom, right into my spirit. And it was pretty much open your mouth and say this. It was my, my heart's beating tremendously. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> right? This is probably one of the first and last times it felt this way, but it was the first time. And then I started... I spoke, it's just a small little phrase. It's kind of like yep. the first time speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. There's a little phrase, mm -hmm. you do the speaking, the Holy Spirit does the enabling, yep. and yep. then more starts flowing by faith, and you yep. just, you know, so it was this little phrase. I started prophesying over this whole team, and then I felt the power leave me, and I was like, what was that? Yep. Yep. And that was a part of my, my testimony of stepping into more of God. And I still did stupid teenage things soon afterwards. <laughs> but I yeah. knew that I kind of put my finger in an electrical outlet. There was power that surged through me. Yes. And within the next year, I was on fire, sold out for Jesus. So for you, Craig, how do you hear God? And then how do you identify uh, that in someone else and then help them grow in how they hear God? Ooh, that's a good question. For me, um, when I started out, actually very much like you, um, I would feel the anointing come on me and I would get a sentence and then it would stop and it was like the Lord's like, just speak what I told you to speak. And as I did that, the next one would flow and the next one would flow. So that, I mean, to be really honest with you, as prophets, we don't want to 
get our mind in the way. And I think the Lord doesn't want us to get our mind in the way and to adapt the, the word to what we wanted to say. So for me, starting out, I, I really saw the Lord doing that in my in my prophecies. It was like a sentence at a time and you speak it and then I'll give you the next. Um, there came a switch a little while later where I got a picture. And that was nice because um, anybody that, that gets prophecy like you did and I did, it's really hard to step out. But, you know, when you get that picture it gives you something to go by and then the words start to flow so i've had a little bit of a mix between but i would say the majority is i get a sentence and then and then speak it sentence speak it um ooh, identifying in others now this is more colette's realm but um i think you can always sense it i mean the prophetic is on when you feel the prophetic on somebody you sense it you know, and and when you sense it on that person, you you feel that anointing and you feel the fire. And when you do that, it opens the door to revelation. And as that revelation flows, I mean, then the Lord speaks through you, and you can give direction. That is so so good. I'm I'm loving the flow of uh, what what the Lord's doing here. You know, we were talking before the this podcast, Jared, and you were sharing how sometimes when you prophesy. Um, to a group, the Lord will highlight someone mm, in the group. And I'm sure some of you guys listening, you know what I'm talking about. It's like you'll be walking through a crowd and there's just this one person that seems to just stand out and you know you've got to go speak to them or whatnot. Well, that's how I know when somebody's got a word. And I really learned to pay attention to that, especially amongst my team. But you know what? We don't do it deliberately enough. That's true. Because the Holy Spirit is is manifesting the gifts all around us all the time if we just paid enough attention to it. So if we're like in a ministry session or if I'm in a group, I can always tell who's got the word and who needs to speak because they're highlighted in the same way that you guys flow that way that you just see it on a person. Well, so do I. But if you did it deliberately, you would start recognizing. Now, this is where it gets exciting. Mm -hmm. If you're sitting in a group of believers who all flow in the gifts, who are all prophesying and able to, you as a leader can step back and you can literally see the Holy Spirit bounce from one to the other to know how he's flowing. And if you give him space, Hello, can we do a little of that? If you give him room, you will see how that word adds to itself as you continue through the meeting if we gave him so much liberty. But before I give the mic back to you, Jared, you said something, and Craig also said something that highlighted in my spirit. You said, it's like that when you flow in the gift for the first time. It comes so strong. And so powerfully, and Craig, you said the exact same thing. You said when you first started prophesying, it's like God takes a hold of you. And then later on, you started to get visions. Now, I noticed this too with other gifts. I noticed this with the gift of discerning of spirits, words of knowledge, wisdom. The very first time I started operating in a gift, it came so powerfully on me. And it's almost like the Holy Spirit was like trying to grab me by the scruff of the neck saying, hello, I'm trying to do something here. But when I got the memo, it started quietening down and that power didn't come in the same way. Now, I don't know if it's the same for you, but I'd love to hear your experiences. The, the first time was I was 16, didn't even know what it was. Right. Someone said that was prophetic. <laughs> OK, sure. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I used to go to that church on Wednesday nights just to watch the people fall down and shake and whatever. It was, it was, it was entertainment. And, and, and let's just say, for me, some of the details are a little smoky before Christ, okay? Just saying. So, so and I, I'm, I'm being totally transparent, but the Holy Spirit was speaking to me, even in that fog, even in that haze, and was getting a hold of me. And I knew eventually I had to get completely right with God, mm. separate myself from the lifestyle I was uh, jumped into right. for a number of years. And I knew God was trying to get a hold of me. And it was, you know, it was a transformation in time, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I started seeing right before I was baptized with the Spirit. Start, and I'd had my first open vision. And I, didn't know what it was. It was like a big movie screen just popped out and I saw this dead tree come to life. And I knew that that was me. This dead tree comes to life, turns green and lush and fruit starts popping all over it. And I just gone through kind of like this deliverance thing, if you will, mm -hmm. you know, not knowing what that was, but knowing, Hey, uh, this crazy stuff is going on. Pray with me. I don't know what's going on. And then I had this open vision, 
but I didn't see clearly mm. until after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then also, uh, when I returned from the mission field for a year, uh, I, I went into the secret place and then, you know, the Holy Spirit was just speaking to me like, uh, what do you see? I'm like, oh, I, I see uh, this, you know, I describe, I see a little river with the trees and, you know, then he'll whisper what Bible verse to check out. So I wow. look it up. Mm-hmm. And so then just like Jeremiah and, you know, what do you see? And then Jeremiah would say, it's a process. Too often we look at the scripture like, oh, this is an immediate thing. Like, yeah. but no, 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 this might be a year in between yes. this verse and that verse. He's in training, right? And so I knew I was in some type of training. And then I went to Bible college and did a lot of ministry, but there's also been pain in the process with the loss of my brother. And, uh, you know, there's all that stuff with, with the family stuff. But even through the pain, even through the, the, the loss and the grief, I jumped in to more of the presence of God. Mm-hmm. And I would pray until something happens, mm-hmm. just and then keep praying more after that. And so it was, it was a whole, you know, a long time or whatever, but pressing into the presence of God, but then just learning and growing because I prophesied some misses, okay? Oh, yeah. Just yeah. like, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I'm sorry, wrong Bible verse. I gave you the one about the guy, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's actually this Bible verse, my bad, (laughs) you know, like, uh, you know, and I get it, but we're all human. We we should operate in love, but, um, you know, it just has continued to grow the, you know, sure. Early on, you get the heart palpitations, you get the the Holy ghost goosebumps, but in time it's just like, you know, just rest, just hang out with Jesus, kick back. Don't rush it. Let him do what he's doing. If he highlights someone to you, great, you know, pick them out. And then I'll just describe what I'm hearing or seeing or, you know, just a number or feeling sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then um, what I like to do is after that, I want them to hear God for themselves. I want to equip them to hear God because I don't want, sure, I could, we could prophesy over everyone in the meeting all night long. You're going to be really tired after that point. (laughs) But why not just equip everybody else, demonstrate it, show it, let the Holy Spirit do it, and then equip everybody else to hear the God, God's voice for themselves and, and learn, oh, that's what this this means. Oh, that's this is what I'm seeing. And then they start prophesying over each other. Like, like I've done meetings where it's like, hey, come and everybody will get a prophecy. And they come to see the big prophet or whatever, the prophetic minister. They show up, and then it's like, you do a couple, and like, they're, they're all waiting, okay? But then it's like, no, now here's how you're going to hear lead them in an activation mm-hmm. and then they start prophesying and then it just light bulbs and they're so wow you know so i hope that answered your question i just want to jump in on something you said there in that when you were broken the lord still used you you know and for me uh i came from that kind of background too i mean we're prophets we're we're rejection hurt we're broken but, you know, when I thought of myself being the prophet of God, we think of ourselves as a perfect vessel that has no shame, has no brokenness. But, you know, I came to find out that it is because of our brokenness, it is because we are not whole, we see God more. You said, even in my pain, it drew me to God. It drew me to seeking Him deeper. You know, so many people have gone, would have gone through the same pain as you, and they would have gone to the world. They would have turned to drugs. They would have turned to. And for me, I realized that when I hear somebody who was put through pain like nobody should experience, and they turn to God, they turn to Jesus, and they go to that secret place to find that healing, to find that place of security, for me, it's a highlight of there's a prophet. There's a, there's a fledgling prophet waiting to break out. And so really, I want to speak to you today. And if you are feeling this, if you are under pressure, if you're feeling the pain and, the, and, and feeling broken and ashamed, you know what, prophet? God is calling you into the secret place because he loves you so much. He's calling you out because he knows what you're worth. The enemy has put these pressures on you to destroy you and to break you in hopes that you're going to run away from God. You're not going to run away from this calling on your life. But go to that corner. Go to that place, that secret place that Jesus is calling you to. Because through it, you will always be a broken vessel. There will always be something that you will not be proud of. But the love and 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 the acceptance that Jesus has for you 
will cover that and you'll be able to be who he's called you to be. What a journey we've been on together, the three of us. And with every story we've shared, it's like I see these steps that we've each taken through our brokenness. But do you notice something, guys? As you went through that brokenness, you heard the voice of God. And sometimes he was really loud. Like with Jared, he like literally had to shout from the mountaintop. I, did you all hear that? Jared was like, Hello. and then I sinned again and the Holy Spirit had to shout at me. And then they sent me to, to school, a Christian school nonetheless. And, and I wasn't very Christian, so the Holy Spirit had to shout at me. I was like, wow, you know, he really had to, had to get through. But, but look at that. Every time you went through these uh, situations in your life, he spoke to you or he spoke through you or you had to prophesy. But guess what? Every single step that we took and we heard equipped us to teach others to hear as well. And that's why prophets are uniquely gifted to teach the body of Christ how to hear the voice of God for themselves. Why? Well, because, guys, we had to. We had to. We desperately had to hear his voice for ourselves because there was nobody else to listen there was nobody else who could save us. There was nobody else who got us. There was nobody else who could reach us in our pain. There was only one who could do it, and it was Jesus. And so we sought to hear his voice because it was our lifeline. We needed it like a, a man dying of thirst needed just a drop of water. And when you stop for a moment and recognize the beauty of that, you see, you just look at your process like, oh, my goodness, my life, it went here, it went there, it went everywhere. But when you look at the beauty of the lessons God taught you on how to hear his voice, uh, guess what? You're already equipped today yes. where you are, not just to prophesy. Come now, guys. This is also, this is the next gen prophets. We're here. Yeah. yeah we're going beyond learning to prophesy. You're here to do as Jared does to teach others how to hear God for themselves. Now, now we're being prophetic. Amen. The uh, fivefold ministry is for the equipping of the saints, the equipping of the saints. And it's also for the maturity of the body of Christ, for maturity. God is waiting for a mature bride. He's waiting for people to hear his voice, respond to him in whatever sphere that they're part of, whatever, uh, whether it's a ministry or business, vocation, whatever it is, you know, you could hear God right where you are. And he's going to speak to you. And by faith, I mean, just a few minutes ago, I, I became aware of an angel standing right here in this room, whether it was there already before and I just saw or whether he just showed up, you know, and, and you know, there's something obviously deeper here. I want to encourage people, connect with the Toaches, the Next Gen Prophets, okay? It's a deep well of the Holy Spirit, okay? I'm I'm swimming right now in, <laughs> in a bunch of stuff. I'm getting a little inebriated under the Holy Spirit, so thank you, Jesus. So I would love for you guys to activate the listeners. Activate them, be led of the Holy Spirit as to what that looks like. I'm not going to put you guys in a box. This is your house anyway. Flow freely, okay? <laughs> Do what you want. <laughs> Amen. There's some of you are already flowing in visions. As uh, you were speaking, Jared, I saw there a lot of you listening to this podcast. You flow in visions all the time, but you're not taking the step towards prophecy. And the Lord wants you to take that step. And um, it's very easy. I encourage you to mess up. I really encourage you to mess up because when we try and be perfect, we forget that he chooses us in our weakness we glory in our weakness and in our messing up. So step out with a little boldness. If you don't feel bold enough to do this at church or in a meeting when somebody is watching you, then you know what? Go to your prayer closet. That's what I teach my students. Go there. And whatever your vision is, instead of just writing the vision down or thinking, well, that's a cool picture, prophesy it out. Yes. I'm going to give you a very practical example. And then, Craig, you can pray over the people. But, you know, I like to do the teaching yeah, points. The yeah. Teacher. So this is my teaching point. This is how you're going to turn a vision into a prophetic word. So say I'm sitting here at this table with these incredible men of God, and I see a wilderness. And it's the craziest thing. Out of the wilderness is coming this 
plant that is blossoming and breaking through this dry, dry soil. It shouldn't even be here. It's not even native to the wilderness, but there's something new coming out. All right, so this is the vision that I'm seeing as we're sitting here. How do I turn this into a prophetic word? It's very simple, for indeed I'm doing a new thing, says the Lord, and I am breaking forth this new treasure. And you have been working for a very long time. In fact, you have been seeking me, you have been praying, you have been doing everything in your power, but what you haven't seen is that there's been something that has been growing underneath the dry ground. But you've looked at the dry ground and you said, Lord, when will you visit me? Lord, when will you bring the rain? But don't you understand that something has been growing all along under the ground? and now you will see it. You will see it spring forth. It will come out of nowhere and you will see this fruit begin to develop in your life. So don't look at the dry ground anymore. Don't look and understand with your eyes, your natural eyes, but take hold of my word today and prepare yourself for this new treasure that I'm bringing into your life, says the Lord. Now, did you sense the ebb and flow of the prophetic word? Some of the way that I prophesied, I was still finding my way a little bit. It's like the anointing would rise and then I was waiting for the vision to change. So I babbled. I'm a great babbler. I just babbled in the middle for a little bit, okay, until I found my way again and then boom, the anointing would rise again. That's how you turn a vision into a prophetic word. And guess what? You can do this right now. You could, you could once you put down this podcast, do this right now. And so I speak over you right now in the name of Jesus, and I take away all these mantles, all these ideas, all these mindsets, all these shackles, all these bondages on your mind right now in the name of Jesus. I remove them, and I call you to stand like little David, just in that linen effort. Stand and be the prophet God called you to be, the very core, that child that he put in your mother's womb. I'm calling you this very day. I'm calling you out. Stand in that immaturity, stand in that naivety and allow the Lord to empower you and to speak into your life, to become the prophet he's called you to. Amen. This is a powerful, powerful time. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus, right now, bring healing to some people. Lord God, bring healing. Someone's liver needs healed. In Jesus' name. Lord God, someone has spots in their lungs. Bring healing in Jesus' name. There it is, right there. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. Father God, by faith, just touch people. Fill them up with your wonderful Holy Spirit. Fill them up from head to toe. Thank you. I see Jesus stepping in. Jesus stepping into your life. Draw near to him, and he will draw near to you. This is a powerful time with Next Gen Prophets. What is the best way for people to get a hold of you or follow you and your ministry? That would be on our website, nextgenprofits.org. Come on over, guys. There's a lot there for you. We've got a community, a yes. personal community. I've got a free ebook for you uh, written by Deborah Ann Feltazen called The Gift of Prophecy for the Next Gen Prophet. It's the whole book in its entirety. Come and get it for free, please. And come and connect with us. We want to know your name.